afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. My name is Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from Holly Eva out at the North Shore. And we have a great program for you today, The Joy of Dance. Especially, we're going to talk about the tango, but lots of different kinds as well. Uh, Cherie Magnus is with us today. She's a dancer, a teacher, a librarian. She's just done about everything, and we're going to uh, <laughs> look forward to talking to her. Welcome to the show, Cherie. I really appreciate you joining us today from Los Angeles. Uh, Cherie uh, grew up in Southern California, the same place I did, and we met in high school. Uh, that was a real turning point for me because you taught me how to dance on stage, and that was wonderful. Uh, well, let's, let's show picture number one. Yeah. Tell Please. us a little bit about that. Well, uh, I think, wasn't it, Ken, there was a talent show or something at school and I had already choreographed this this um, Charleston dance from the boyfriend musical and I needed somebody to dance it with and so I looked over at the history class one day and I saw Ken who I did not know really and I thought he looked like you know he'd be pretty good up there so I asked him and he said yes and so we practiced and we rehearsed and we did it and it was great well, it was a real turning point for me because uh, my mother had taught me to dance in the seventh grade. She didn't want me sitting on the sidelines. She wanted me living life out on the dance floor. So she taught me how to do the waltz. But uh, Cherie was the one who taught me about performing uh, the dance, getting up in front of an audience. And that was a real turning point for me. And uh, I'm forever in your debt for doing that. Oh, my pleasure, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit. Uh, you know, the key here is the enjoyment. And uh, I can't tell you how I have enjoyed dancing. I'm not the greatest dancer in the world, unlike Cherie, but uh, I have always had fun dancing in the various kinds. And uh, so maybe that's a good point to start uh, here with you, Cherie. How, if you can tell the audience how you found first, first found joy in dancing and how that guided you to basically your life passion. Absolutely. I've danced since I could walk until the pandemic. So that's a long time. But I have to say that music comes first. Music always has made me dance and been my inspiration. So I remember my dad would take me into a bar and get a, a, uh, a beer and a jukebox to be on. I'd be dancing a little toddler. I'd be dancing in a bar. Because I couldn't help it, the music made me dance. So, one form or another, I've danced all my life. And I have to say that after my husband died, uh, he died too young, and I was too young, and I didn't know what to do with myself. But I was saved. Once again, I was saved by dance. I went to a country and music, western, uh, country and western music nightclub, dance club in Santa Monica. And I went every single night for a year, every single night. I, I would come home after work, put on my cowboy boots, and I'd go to the club and be home in bed by 10. But every Christmas, New Year's, 4th of July, I was there. And it, it really saved my life. Wow. That's Dancing you know, it gives you hormone, you know, it gives you uh, endorphins, and you get addicted to it. Like, I guess, a long-distance runner. And, it's a good thing That's, to be addicted to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, you know, when I was thinking about this, you know, I, I thought, well, you know, everybody talks about the first step that their their kid makes. And I thought to myself, uh, well, the first step is really a directive thing. It's really a functional thing. It, it allows you to get from one place to the other. But then there's the first step that you make that's not functional. It's not... Uh, something that's going to take you to some place or allow you to do something. It's just something you do that brings you joy. It's like letting yourself go. And uh, the way I thought of it was that when that happens, uh, it's not your brain that's that's guiding you, it's your heart. And uh, dancing just makes your heart soar. And, uh, you know, it, it's always been incredible. So I'm really anxious to uh, hear more about your experiences because 
Cherie has been a lot of different places in the world. Uh, she's been to uh, the Cuba. She's been to uh, Mexico. She's been to France. To been to Buen Buenos Aires. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, I've so danced in all those places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you started with uh, country western, and with with cowboy boots. That's terrific. Well, no, because, I mean, excuse me, I, I didn't start with that. Um, before before that happened, I was a, a professional belly dancer, and I danced in all the the clubs. I danced in Vegas. I danced in Tahoe, um, and I was the artistic director of my there there I am um, of uh, perfumes to Verabi, and uh -huh. we, and that was I did that for I don't know like fifteen years, and wow. then. Then the country and Western faith came when my husband passed away. And wow. after that, then the tango phase came. <laughs> and the tango took you a lot of places, I take it from there. And then when I was in Mexico, I studied flamenco. But uh, I love flamenco. But what I learned about flamenco is that you can't start when you're 50 years old. You've got to start flamenco like ballet when you're young. Mm -hmm. So I did it for about three years. I did it two years in in Mexico, and then I did it in Buenos Aires. I studied it, and I performed a little bit with the teacher's troupe, but it wasn't for me. It was too hard to do it at that age, but I love flamenco. So I was in 100%, 1,000% into tango by then. Uh, we've mentioned a number of different kinds of dances. Uh... And it certainly sounds like you've done every kind of dance there is. Oh, no. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, the particulars to sort of compare those as far as the joy? You, I assume that the you got different forms of joy from each one of those because they're oh. so different. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, the variety of dances that you've done and what really uh, makes a difference for you. It gives you joy in each one of those types. Well, I, I've dance ballet i thought what i started with when i was three years old um and that's what i really really love the most but i learned that my body is not a ballet body there's strict rules about how you can be shaped and how long your arms are or whatever so i realized that i i couldn't do that as a profession and uh, but once again, with either ballet or any of it, it's always, for me, the music first. The music first, and that inspires the dancing and well, tango, I'm too. So, well, tell us a little bit about the music, because uh, later on in the show, we're going to talk about Cherie's uh, latest book, which uh, in the title is Rachmaninoff. So I know you love Rachmaninoff and his music. Tell us a little bit about the various kinds of music that have inspired you in your dancing. Well, in ballet, actually in ballet class, that's the first time I ever heard a tango. The mm -hmm. pianist would play for the big uh, leg kicks at the bar. Tango, really, boom, 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 ba -da -da -da, you know. And that's the first time I ever heard tango. And I said, what is, I love it, I love it. And aside from, from tango in the ballet classes, they would play, you know, Chopin and classical music. So I love that. I can't say I really was enamored of country and Western music when I started dancing it, but I got used to it. And I bought a lot of CDs of it. <laughs> but I hope I never have to hear Achy Breaky Heart again as long as I live. So you um, did a lot of dancing to that uh, uh, music then? Every that night? That song. Oh, well, by the time I was going every night, everybody was kind of getting tired of that song. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. So um, I started tango. Uh, well, the belly dancing, well, that's a performance thing. And what I like so much about belly dancing, as well as the tango, it's, it's similar in that they're both improvised. Improvised to the music that you have. It's not choreographed. And um, that's very exciting because you don't know what's going to happen. Audiences that know, the musicians don't know because they're improvising too. And uh, of course, in, in tango, you dance to, excuse me, to the recordings made in the 30s and the 40s, the golden age of tango. But it's all improvised, not the music, but um, the dancing. 
so it can be very creative. And when the couple are dancing uh, in harmony, it, it's like, and then with har in harmony with everybody on the dance floor, it's like you're in the universe. The harmony with the universe is absolutely amazing. It's not like ballroom tango at all, please. No, no show tango, no dancing with the stars, no ballroom. Not like that. So maybe we can show the little video now so people know what I'm talking about. So we can't play the music with this, which is unfortunate. It's a great, great, great tango song called El Rey, the King. But this is my partner, Ruben, and this is my last tango in Buenos Aires. This was my swan song before I left to come back to LA. And you can see how the couple dances extremely close together. They never break the embrace. The band leads whatever step the music moves him to do. And the woman follows. So it's extremely thrilling. And talk about endorphins. <laughs> so you can see it's nothing like show tango. But I was very excited because um, my partner and I uh, won the championship in 2008, the Metropolitano Tango Championship. And I was the first foreigner that ever did better than the, the entry heat. So, yeah, uh, that, I, I'm very proud of that. Brought me a lot of joy, Ken. <laughs> but I, I don't imagine. believe in, in dance competition, but that particular one, I guess because we won. I don't know. <laughs> but I never entered again. Well, it's it, it has to be a lot of work in addition to joy. I mean, uh, joy doesn't come out and given to you on a platter for you doing nothing. You have to uh, commit yourself and uh, give of yourself and work hard. I'm sure that that was all, you know, part of that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, tango is known as the dancer's dance because it's hard in that it's improvised. There's no choreography. You've got to learn like, how to walk. You've got to learn how to walk with your head right up next to your partner. And I tell you this, American men freak out about that. <laughs> <laughs> totally freak out about that. If they're not, if they're that close with a woman, they don't know and who they have no plans to seduce. They, they have a real hard time. I'm relaxing. But of course, the dance came from Argentina and their personal space is much, much closer. So they don't have a problem with that. And once, uh, once you get used to it, you love it. Well, yeah. I wish I had the talent. I could have done that. Uh, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait about the talent. You don't need to. That's one thing about, about the tango. It's based on what people do in their lives, walking down the street. The basic step is a walk. Of course, you have to walk to the music, but mm -hmm. you don't have to do, you don't, if you listen to the music, if you feel the music and the rhythm of tango is the heartbeat, um, you can do it. You don't have to learn fancy things. Well, that's the thing that would have, you know, I'm notorious for not being able to carry a tune or follow the beat. Uh, one thing I can do is get out on the dance floor. And I'm not like the American man that you talked about. I have no problem putting, you know, doing face to face. Uh, that's wonderful to me. But, uh, maybe but you they... have to dance at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, let's go back to the uh, the dancing and the music following the dance, because mm. that's what uh, I enjoyed at UCLA. Um, Cherie and I, uh, we, we had a friendship in high school and, uh, then we both wound up at UCLA. Um, and, uh, because of her, I had the guts enough to go ahead and take a couple years of modern dance. Uh, but we didn't, I never saw Cherie at, uh, you know, we never were dancing at the same time because she was way ahead of me. But, uh, I did take that two years, well, actually two and a half years of modern dance. and. Uh, the wonderful thing was the music was following me, and I thought that was just heaven because I didn't have to worry about the beat. I could just be myself and follow what I could. And uh, and because uh, 
There were very few male dancers at UCLA in the modern dance department. Uh, they, you know, were okay with me dancing, even though I didn't have the, uh, you know, and forgive the word talent, but at least the uh, propensity to, uh, to do as well. But I loved it. I loved every minute of it. And uh, and I love the fact that you got me out on the dance floor. And I think that's, that's an important thing uh, because people are self-conscious, I think, and especially men. I would certainly agree with that or self-conscious of, about being on the dance floor. How do you how do you get people less self-conscious? How do you talk males to go out and put themselves on this under the spotlight or in in the case of dance maybe a twirling light above with uh, facets and and all this light coming down on the dance floor and spotlights for you. How how do you talk them into doing that or how do you how do you get them to do that? Well, it is true that men are not as comfortable with their bodies as women. So they think when they go out, try to do some basic walking on the dance floor, that everybody's looking at them and they're embarrassed. Nobody's looking at, you know. But you tell, you tell a man that there's going to be a lot of beautiful young women there that they can hold in a close embrace. That's how you get them. <laughs> yeah. The truth. And there are two. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we should advise people that uh, the, the thing to do is to uh, to go out and take some dance classes then. And uh, not only to meet uh, maybe attractive people in the dance floor, but also to find joy in your own self by dancing. Get those endorphins racked up. <laughs> Save them for a rainy day. Now, after UCLA, of course, you... Uh, we're wrapped up with family and uh, for a long time. And uh, uh, after uh, your husband passed, uh, that's when you went to France. Uh, could you yeah. tell us a bit about that? Well, that's when I started. Uh, when I was tired of going to the Denim and Diamonds every night, and I was recuperating a little bit. Of course, then I got cancer. I got breast cancer, so uh, I kind of postponed my trip to France. But uh, I took all the chemo and did all the treatment and everything. Matter of fact, I had chemo in Paris. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I went to France and uh, I tried to get a job there. I applied at the Pompidou Center. They needed a librarian, but I couldn't get my paperwork, you know, the green card situation. So I, so I came back and then um, I moved to Mexico and did flamenco and I took my cap. And then I said, well, I might as well go all the way down south. I might as well go to Buenos Aires for the tango. So I did. And I was there for 11 years. Wow. Meanwhile, I went, I, I danced tango. Well, I, I went to, to Cuba six times. Uh, I loved Cuba. It was a cultural exchange. I went with a group to teach the Cubans tango and they were to teach us salsa. Oh, well, it's fun. It was so fun. And then um, uh, I danced tango in, in Paris. I danced tango in, in Madrid. And that's the thing. Once you get into it, you, you kind of, you lose interest in everything else. You want to go where you can dance. And uh, so I did. And that's why I ended up in Buenos Aires, because that's where it all was born. Yeah, for sure. Uh are there differences, uh, you know, uh, when you dance the tango in Paris, for instance, is that different, uh, different than dancing it in Argentina? Oh, so different. <laughs> so di dancing in, in, in like United Kingdom. Oh, my gosh, it's so different. Uh, they have their own style. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> you know, I mean, God bless them. I'm happy for them. Um, but I don't even like the way Americans dance tango. I like the way Argentines dance tango because they have the, the passion and they muchísima pasión and they listen to the music. They really listen to it and they're not worried about anybody looking at them. And the embrace is amazing. So I have to it's different wherever you go to dance, but generally it's not as good. That's why so many tourists go to Argentina to dance. But uh, I have a friend who sort of travels the world, loves tango, too. And uh, basically, it sounds like you can go to 
tango festivals all over the world and just, uh, you know, follow the tango, you know, as far as instead of well, following the yellow do. brick road, you follow the tango. Well, it's, it's kind of super fun, really, because you you arrive in Prague or anywhere that you've never been. You don't speak the language. You don't know what you're going to do at night, but you look online, you find out, oh, there's a milonga, a, a social tango dance uh, at 10 o'clock over there. And you go and all of a sudden there's all these people that you can dance with and you can talk to. And, you know, it's, it's a nice society of people. What, what makes for a great tango partner? You know, I mean, they obviously you've danced with a lot of different uh, people in your lifetime. Uh, what, what makes it, uh, for instance, what makes a male stand out as a good tango partner? He listens to the music. And he has a great embrace. Mm -hmm. He's considerate of the woman and in the line of dance, you know, he's not bumping into anybody or he's not hogging the floor. But it's listening to the music and, and that embrace. And it doesn't matter if he just walks, you know, walks in a good embrace. Fun. Mm -hmm. The woman loves it. <laughs> well, I miss it. I really miss the joy of tango, I can tell you. Uh, so no, no, no tango in the U.S. Uh, recently then for you? Well, there is a, there is tango in Los Angeles. Of course, it would be a big city and a lot of people, but nothing close to me. I don't drive anymore. I don't have a car. Um, I, I don't want to spend a lot of money in an Uber to go an hour away. And you don't know if it's the right people will be there. And I, anyway, I. Uh, I'm not a big fan of of American style tango, so yeah. So you miss you miss Argentina then, I take it. I miss I miss dancing there. Yeah. Argentina is a beautiful country, but Buenos Aires is kind of a hard city. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'll go back and visit. <laughs> I, I need some more joy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, Let's uh, let's talk about uh, writing, because uh, Cherie has done some. Uh, she may not be dancing as much today as she was before, but she's doing a lot of writing, and of which I'm very uh, envious of, because I've been doing writing for many many years, but never published a book. And Cherie's already published three dance memoirs uh, that are phenomenal, and I really enjoyed. <laughs> Uh, and she's out with a new book this year that's um, not about tango for the first time. It's about uh, a dream that she has and about climate change. And uh, it's wonderful. Maybe you could tell us about how you got into writing. And then uh, after writing about tango, how you got uh, to uh, Lincoln and Rachmaninoff. And tell us a little bit about that. Well, the book is called... Lincoln and Rachmaninoff walk into a bar, climate mm -hmm. change novella. And it's not a dream I had. People say, oh, did you dream it? No, I'm, I'm not the protagonist. I'm not the narrator. I mean, I'm the, the character is. So I never had this dream. But I thought about somebody having this dream. And I thought a lot about Lincoln and Rachmaninoff. I did a lot of research being a librarian, too. And I discovered how similar they were. And they're t my great heroes, both of them. And the more I thought about them, the more I thought, well, what would, what would they do if they came back to Earth on assignment to stop climate change? With brilliant men um, with all their foibles and, and quirks. And so it started from there. And I had so much fun writing. I, th that brought me joy. Well, that's terrific. You know, I thought when you said, you know, when you're talking, um, I mistook the narrator for you, of course. And oh, um, a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't necessarily think it was a sleep dream. I thought, you know, because I do, I dream a lot at night when I'm sleeping, of course, but uh, I also dream during the day, daydreaming. And that's one of the things where I get inspiration for books is daydreaming. And uh, so, it sounded to me like you were daydreaming about these two wonderful men and about your concern about climate change, which I certainly share. 
And by the way, I share your admiration of uh, Rachmaninoff and Lincoln as well. So it was wonderful uh, seeing them together uh, and uh, tackling this. Um, well, I think if, if any two dead heroes can fix it, they could. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the audience, uh, Rachmaninoff was going to do the music and Lincoln was going to supply the lyrics, which certainly made a lot of sense. Masters of creating music and masters, a master at words. Of the word, yes. yes word. Can we show the cover, or did we already do that? Yes, we did. We did. Okay. Yeah. Senior moment. Let, let's take a look at the cover of your first uh, book in the Tango trilogy, The Church of Tango. Not Tango. Uh, Death, Dance, Destiny. Is the yeah, name that's of the, trilogy. the trilogy. That's the trilogy. Yeah. But this is the first yeah. book in the trilogy. Yeah. Right. First one I wrote was number two. Yeah. Right? And. Yeah. Uh, it was a special favorite of mine, and I, I love the cover. Tell us a little bit about the cover. Well, the the I knew I was living in in Mexico, and uh, I lived up above an art gallery. They were always having cheese and wine uh, openings and vernissage, so I went downstairs always get some free cheese and wine. Anyway, this artist had all these paintings of empty suitcases and empty boxes, and I was standing there looking at at it. And the man next to me said, oh, how depressing. And I said, oh, no, it's so exciting. What are you going to put in that suitcase? I would put my tango shoes. So the artist heard me. And he said, hey, bring me your shoes. I'll paint the painting. So he did. And uh, I knew that it would be on the cover of my book. And it was also on exhibition in a mu museum in Caretero for a month. So I was proud of that, on loan from me. So, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. They're your shoes. That's phenomenal. That's a great yeah, story. Like <laughs> <laughs> and the artist just came over and said, I'll paint it for you. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> Talk yeah. about yeah. Talk about joy. I think art brings joy. You know, I mean, they're all interconnected. And we've had programs on the joy of art and the joy of music and uh and the joy of dance just fits in there so perfectly. It just uh they feed upon one another. And like you yeah. say, the music just uh you know, when you're Everything. moving and the music comes in, it your heart soars. Uh, just, uh, it's wonderful. And I think we're just about out of time, Cherie. And uh, oh, Ken, well, this has been <laughs> so much fun to talk to you about my favorite topic. <laughs> well, I'm hoping that I can talk Cherie into coming back and doing it again in in a couple months and uh, and picking up some of the many things that uh, we didn't cover in Cherie's lifetime. <laughs> uh, this, this this passionate lifetime and this joy of dance, which is. Uh, uh, well, always it would be an honor. Me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to our audience that uh, tuned in and, and watched. Uh, we're, that's who we're here for, is for you. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks to uh, the Think Tech Hawaii staff, uh, Haley and Jay and Michael and Ash, uh, who give us such wonderful support and making it so pleasant to be here with you all. I hope you'll join us in two weeks when we've got another session of Finding Happiness in Hard Times, which we all need to do. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, Please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.